first thing that we want to be able to do is um, take the big sheets of um, styrene that you order from the uh, plastic supplier and cut it down into 24 inch by 24 inch squares. Sort of. Wipe it. It's actually four foot and a quarter. So it's that slightly larger than what we actually need. Mark it at the two foot mark. We'll mark it across and make a line. We just need to uh, make some guidelines so we'll know where to score it. You, a lot of the plastic suppliers will uh, actually uh, cut it for you. You want to be careful that you don't cut your mom's favorite carpet or uh, some oriental rug or whatever. I just use one of these uh, utility knives. They work great for just almost this whole trooper project. <clears throat> You just score down the line. Since this is slightly larger than what we actually need, we'll probably wind up having to trim some of them a little bit. This is the material that Bill sent me. And we're going to pull Bill um, some uh, forearms and some hand grips. You're going to hear a loud noise, and that's going to be the plastic breaking this piece there's our two foot squares ready to load the old score and snap technique we now have the two foot square material that we can load into our vacuum form machine so let's go fire up the vacuum form machine all right we're out here in the workshop and uh this is a Thurston James model vacuum form machine. It's got a uh, holding frame that's two foot square that uh, we've, we're familiar with. Forming platen that's 21 and a half inches square. And as you can see right now, I've got it set up to pull uh, forearms and hands and, and a little knee strap thing. Um, Bill wanted a, a couple of parts for some custom trooper he was making. It's two parts to a machine, the, the vacuum side and the heater side. And this is what the heater looks like. It's just a custom-made uh, oven element and uh, made of nichrome wire and ceramic standoffs. And um, the, the heat shielding material is actually at Hardy Backer 500 that you get at the hardware store. So other than the wire and the ceramic standoffs, you can make all of this from a trip to Lowe's or to Home Depot. I needed to be able to test my system using a, a commonly available, easy to acquire, easy, cheap vacuum source. And so what I use is a three horsepower shop vac. It takes about 20 minutes for the for the, the oven to get hot. It has to heat up all of the, the calcium silicate mill board, the, the heat insulation board, the Hardybacker 500. And it takes about 20 minutes for that to happen to get the necessary convection heat to get the corners nice and hot. I like to wear gloves when I'm handling the hot plastic because I can massage the, the plastic into the corners and stuff. And these gloves work pretty well. Just a ch standard uh, pair of leather work gloves works great as well. You don't need any fancy welder's gloves or anything like that. The plastic doesn't get that hot. We got the gasoline generator running now. You can start to see the heating elements start to glow, and then that's when we can start timing it out. So here we go. You put your hand over there, it's already starting to heat up. Oh yeah. And if you, if you can get a shot over here in the corner, you can see those, the, the coals are already starting to glow. Lid really makes a difference. Your vacuum floor machine is only as good as your heater. So if you've got a really good heater, uh, you're going to get better results than having one that's sort of cobbled together from a couple of indoor electric grills or trying to do it out of your wife's uh, oven. She's not going to appreciate the smell of melting plastic permeating the house. It's really starting to heat up and uh, you can hardly hold your hand in front of it. There's a taper. This acts like a sort of a short chimney. The elements themselves have direct heat and uh, the walls of the uh, of the oven act as convection heat. Uh, it's a 28 inch base and with a 24 inch top which is the same size as our older frame which is the same size as our plastic. So in theory what it's going to do is on the corners, the corners are really the critical spot. It's real easy to get the center 
of your plastic nice and warm. It's these corners that you have to be really concerned with. There's the, they're going to be your cold spots. And so you have to get your temperature up hot, hot enough for your corners to make a good seal. And that's our big challenge. The shop vac, or home vacuum, no matter how fancy they are, the bottom line is they only draw a certain amount of vacuum pressure, three to four inches of mercury. That's how vacuums are measured, inches of mercury. And most of your commercial vacuum pumps can draw anywhere between 24 and 28 inches of mercury. So the theory is that a shop vac is only drawing a fraction of the, of the vacuum that a high vac uh, setup with the tanks and everything could draw. Uh, if I could chain two shop vacs together where one is drawing through the other, I could increase that from four inches of mercury to six inches of mercury and get 50% better performance out of using two shop vacs. So the shop vac drawing three to four inches of mercury is adequate to pull tight enough detail on our uh, on our bolts. Orienting your, your pieces on the forming platen can be kind of uh, hit or miss. Sometimes you'll get real lucky and get, the, get them laid out just perfect and they pull great. Sometimes you'll get parts too close together and it'll pop a hole in it and you'll lose vacuum and you'll have to throw that piece away. And sometimes you'll pick up something called webbing. It's where the draw sags too much and you get this weird, weird taper on it. And so it's a trial and error you experiment around with and you figure out how many pieces you can load on a mold. Um, you can align these things all the way to the very corners because this thing will pull all the way, pull air all the way back to this, these outer rows. So, you know, aligning them where, you, where you've got nice, uh, nice holes all the way around it because the vacuum's going to pull through there. Um, that's pretty much the way you want to do it. These are little uh, add-on pieces. I call them tapers. I don't know. There may be a there may, there may be a, a professional term for them. I don't know. They're not attached. And what can happen is pull the shell, and uh, when you're demolding these smaller pieces, you can pop these tapers out, and then get a grip on the mold and pull it out. I can't tell you how many times I've torn my molds up trying to demold them. So I'm coming up with different options on on ways of making the demold process a little bit easier. In reality, these molds will only last so many pulls before they'll need repairs, and these forearm pieces are getting to that point where they really need to start getting some repair work done on. Our oven is probably getting to a point where we can hardly touch it. Yeah, it's getting pretty hot. And so we'll load a piece of plastic up in here and let it start warming up a little bit. Forming, the frame is designed to work with these two two foot square pieces, so it's an economy of scale. If you can uh, get your material in a four by eight sheet and trim it down to twenty four inch squares, there's no waste. Now I like to sit over here and kind of watch it. Um, this thing generates a lot of heat. This is uh, you can I don't know if you can see that on camera or not, but you can see the coils glowing down in there, and uh, the plastic will start to buckle pretty quickly. And you, can, you may already be able to see it starting to, start to wiggle and wave a little bit. And that's normal. So we'll let this back on there. It kind of helps heat it from both sides. I'm going to go ahead and load the gloves up. It's really starting to get some wiggle in here now. As you can see, I, as I run my finger over it, it, you know, it's already pretty soft. If one corner of the plastic's not hot enough, and another corner of the plastic has gotten hot enough, we will regulate that heat a little bit. You can slide the, uh, the lid back and forth a little bit and let, let some of the hot air out. And we're starting to, starting to get that, you know, like, like vinyl, about four minutes. And we're going to be real close here, real fast. Go ahead and fire up that. Okay, it's fire. Seal on it that time. 